Hello, my name is Camille and welcome back to my channel. In this quick little video I'm going to share with you the most useful tip if you are working with nested sequences in Adobe Premiere Pro. And I mean literally, this tip is a game changer if you are using nested sequences on a daily basis. So without any further ado, well, let's get started. Alright, I have my laptop right here, so let's just jump into Premiere Pro right away. And here, as you can see, I have a simple timeline with three clips in here. These are actually parts of my previous video about winter photography and how to take advantage of the winter time in order to make great photos and videos. So if you want to check it out, link is up here. So let's nest those clips into a one nested sequence. So select them all, right click and nest. And right now we have all of those clips inside this nested sequence. And why would you even want to do that? Well, the possibilities with nested sequences are endless. I am actually using the double nesting technique in Premiere Pro, which I have also explained previously on my channel. If you want to check it out, link is up here. It's a very, very useful technique. I use it for pretty much all of my videos. But the problem with nested sequences is that once you group the clips into a one nested sequence, it appears as one clip on your timeline and it's basically like a black box, so you don't know what's inside. And it's kind of valuable to know what's inside, how many clips are in there to edit, how to, for instance, place your audio track if you have an external audio recorder, maybe do you want to know where to place your B-roll clips. So it's very useful to know where are the clips inside a nested sequence and how do you do it? Well, you use markers. So just a quick recap, let me show you what markers are in Premiere. So if you have a clip selected and you hit the M key on your keyboard, you are adding a marker to the clip. And if you move this around, you can see that this marker, this little symbol here, is moving along with this clip. But if you have no clip selected, for instance, we can click away here in this blank space and hit the M key, we are adding the marker to the timeline. And this can also be very useful for several other reasons. I'm not gonna dive into this right now. But the thing is that if you move your clip like this, the marker stays in the same position because it's a marker on the timeline. So let's back it up and let me show you what happens if I add markers inside the nested sequence. So let's go in. And now, for instance, I can also place markers on those clips. But, for instance, we want to know where one clip ends and the other begins inside this nested sequence. So what I do is place the playhead right between those clips here inside the nested sequence, then click out so that none of the clips are selected. This is very important. And then hit the M key. And also let's do that for the second cut. Again, click out, M. And now if you go above, we can see that we have those markers on this clip, which is the nested sequence right here. So we basically took the information of the markers from inside the nested sequences outside. And this is super useful. If you knew about that, don't click out the video just yet because there is one little caveat that makes it so much better. So let me just show you that. Let's go back inside. And now what we can do, if we place our playhead right where the marker is and click out again and hit the M key again, we are opening the properties of the marker. So we can name it, for instance, here, the clip that is starting right now is me walking towards the camera, so we can just name it walking towards. And we can give it a different color. For instance, we can give it the color of red, let's say. Okay, and let's do the same to the other marker. Click out M again, walking away. And now let's give it, for instance, the blue color. We can click okay. And now let's see the magic happening. So if we alt click on the marker, we are actually splitting the marker. We can take the right side of it and prolong it, which reveals the name. Wait for it. Let's do the same for the other one. And now if we go out of the nested sequence, check out what happens. Right now, we have those markers right here on the nested sequence clip. So we know exactly what is happening inside the nested sequence. We know that right here, we are starting the clip with me walking towards the camera. If we scrub forward, we know that right here starts the next clip, which is walking away. So we have all the information about what happens inside the nested sequence right from the outside. So syncing audio, placing B-roll and everything like this makes it just so much easier. I hope you learned something from this video. If you did, make sure to hit the like button down below. Also consider subscribing to the channel because I will be uploading a lot more tricks like this. I have a lot of tricks up my sleeve, believe me. So consider subscribing. Also, I usually post here on YouTube photography tutorials, filmmaking tutorials, also tutorials about drones, travel videos, vlogs. Sometimes I'm going to Iceland very soon. So I'll be dropping some amazing footage from there as well. So consider subscribing and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye. Thank you.